Hey, Barack, how's it hanging? Hey, Joe, you ready to hook a giant? You bet. I, what an amazing day for it. You're absolutely right. There's nothing quite like a soothing sea breeze under the hot sun on the beach. Mmm, you said it. Fishing is a great excuse to spend the whole day at the beach. Great location, too. Cape Cod is a vibe. I guess Donnie can be right sometimes. If you say so. Where's the Cheeto man, anyway? Did he get mauled to death by seagulls or something? It's possible. He did say he was stopping to get us all lunch. Says it's a must-have for this area. Well, just in case he's an idiot, I brought the presidential cooler. Nice. What did Jill pack for us this time? Let's see. Uh, we got some brewskis, a couple waters, a few PB&Js, some ice cream sandwiches. Oh, and, and even a couple fruit cups for you. Oh, fuck yeah. So what are we fishing for again? Really, anything that's around, mainly stripers and bluefish, though. I figured I'd pack for anything, gear-wise. Pretty smart. You never know what could appear in this vast ocean. Hey, look, Barack, a beached whale. Oh, wait, no, here comes Donnie. I heard that, prick. Hey, Donnie, I'll have to admit, you picked a great spot. You know me? I always remember the good spots. It helps to GPS any location that holds a lot of fish like this. Oh, so you've been here before. Yeah, I came out here with Robert Kraft, Bill Belichick, and Tom Brady. We were on Bill's boat and ran into a ton of bait, filled the live well with mackerel, and came to this spot. Uh, literally one of the best days of fishing in my life, believe me. We caught so many bluefish, and Kraft caught a striper that was the same size as him. He's not that big. Are you sure it was a striper and not a stripper? Robert loves his whores, but that day was worth returning for. Too bad Bill is doing training camp, or we might have been out there with him. So what did you bring me for lunch? It smells awful. The smell is from my bait. I bought some frozen herring from the bait and tackle shop up the street, and I'm letting them defrost in the sun. I brought only the most delicious food that New England can offer. I'm strapped to the gills with lobster rolls. Well, I'll be damned. I haven't had a lobster roll in forever. I was worried, but this is a rather pleasant surprise. I got like six of them, but I'm for sure taking two down. Do either of your guys want one? I think they're okay. Why are you guys wearing Speedos? Oh, yeah, Nancy told them not to talk to you. Fine with me. More lobster rolls for us. Thanks, bro. Oh, they look good. Fuck yeah, they are. Packed with lobster. They are so good, they'll ruin lobster rolls for you anywhere else. Some places have good ones, but definitely not as consistent as up here. Did you get anything else? Yeah, they had some crinkle cut fries. Yes, crinkle cut are goaded with seafood. Ah, fuck, fuck you, fuck off. Fuck. Ha ha ha. <laughs> fuck shit, my fries. No, my crinklies. Goddamn shit rats with wings. Why aren't they scared of me? The seagulls on these beaches really don't give a fuck, probably due to years of beachgoers feeding them. Have your Secret Service guys open fire next time. That's probably not a good idea considering who pays them. Oh, shit, you got Hillary's guys? Sweet, which one of you killed Epstein? I'm just playing, tell Hillary I said hi. So what's the best spot to cast at here? Well, what are you using? I also stopped at that bait and tackle shop, but I picked up sea worms. I have a bobber and a hook, just like always. I don't like those things, they creep me out. Yeah, they're super ugly, but a great bait. You see those rocks over there that are just barely submerged and the white water around them? That's a perfect ambush spot for striper and bluefish to just cast out near that stuff. Okay, cool, and here I thought you were gonna bitch at me for my classic hook and bobber. That was in fresh water. If you're using earthworms to catch largemouth, then you might be a loser. But in salt water, a lot of times fish are harder to find, and live bait is really good for drawing fish in with the smell. Any saltwater fisherman will tell you that live bait is king. All right, here I go. Nice spot, right next to the wash. Beautiful. Now it's time to stick the rod in the sand and enjoy my beach day. I see you already got a couple lines in the water, Barack. Any luck? Nah, I just got here 20 minutes before you two. What do you got out there? I caught a pogey with a cast net and chopped him up. I got one rod with a pyramid weight and some of the cut pogey suspended a couple feet off the bottom and I have a nice flounder double rig on the lighter rod in the eelgrass. Very good, Barack. Now the only thing left to do is pop a couple of brewskis and enjoy our lobster rolls. Do you guys want to do another fishing tier list like last time? I am so down for that salt water this time. What, are we gonna put everything that swims in the ocean on a tier list? Nah, we would be here all day. What if we just cover what's around here in the New England area? That sounds better. We should do this every time we visit a new location for a fishing trip. Nothing better than shooting the shit and ranking fish. We should probably start with bait fish first, like the previous tier list. Sure, what should we start with? Let's just go from the bottom of the food chain up, starting with the herring. 
these soft-bodied relatives of shad are very numerous in these waters. The herring run from about March to May. Their numbers makes them the most easily accessible bait in the spring. Are we talking Atlantic herring? Yes, for sure, but I would also lump blueback herring and the alewife in this as well. They're all basically the same thing. Jill is my alewife for packing all these brewskis. These guys are great. Considering our ranking for shad in the freshwater list, I expect they're high tier. It's hard to beat a bait fish that schools in the thousands. The only one drawback is they don't get much bigger than about a foot long, and you're more likely to see herring half that size. Still a great bait for most of the game fish you'll encounter. That's true, but it doesn't cover every game fish, and you're a lot more likely to catch these with cast nets rather than on rod and reel because of their size and the fact that they mainly eat plankton. Still, they're a soft-bodied bait fish. Game fish like striper have no problem taking them down. Plus, you can use them to cut down the mightiest tree in the forest. If you get that reference, you're a legend. I'm thinking we're leaning A tier on herring. What do we think? Sounds good to me. Probably a lower A tier, to be fair. Uh, a few better options, but I can't complain when they're readily available frozen. All right, what about another similar type of fish that we ranked previously, the rainbow smelt? Trump rainbow smells like ass. You stole my joke and you didn't even use it right. Figures for smelt, I would actually rank them lower than the last list. In salt water, there's just much better options, sharing the weaknesses of herring being too small for some of the larger game fish, like tuna. Fair enough. At least you don't have to go far from shore to get into them, unlike many other bait fish. Plus, rainbow smelt can't stand up to a pickled herring. I forgot you eat bait fish, you fucking psycho. A fish is a fish. Well, with that extremely helpful knowledge, I feel fine putting them in C tier. C tier is fine. This lobster roll fucking slaps, by the way. Yeah, they were so good. Jesus, I haven't even taken a bite yet. You already finished both? It's one thing if the gulls steal my fries, but I'm giving them no shot at my lobster rolls. I don't know how you eat that thing in like two bites, but I'm slightly impressed. What do we think about sand eels? These ones are definitely sought after by many fish. Uh, uh, I've seen quite a few offshore boils with sand eels and all sorts of game fish. And these are some of the best bait out there. They have an interesting action. When you rig them up on a bobber or sinker, they don't tend to swim far from where you cast them, so you can work them how you like. Sand eels also have resilience to colder waters and tend to stick around a lot longer than other bait fish. And how can you not enjoy using eels for bait? It's not actually an eel, Joe. It is, in fact, a fish. I thought eels were fish. Well, yes, but the point is they aren't eels. It, it looks like an eel, and it's called an eel. Pretty sure it's an eel. It's not a fucking eel. Shut up. Barack is right, but I see your point, Joe. One snake fish looks much the same as another. It's like a worm and a fish, perfect for bobber folk. Considering all attributes, including size, availability, and even hardiness, sand eels deserve at least a low S tier. Quite an impressive animal, to be honest. You can find them right off the coast, rooting around in sand pebble beaches, or you can find them in schools 50 miles offshore. Adaptable and feeds every fish on the list. They're so good that one of the best ways to catch any fish on the roster is to just imitate a sand eel with something like a sluggo lure. I'm at S tier for the fact that hundreds of them jump out of the water at once to avoid game fish. Okay, sweet. How about the classic that I've got on my lines right now? The pogey, also known as the menhaden. Many fishermen call the menhaden the most important fish in the ocean. It's not hard to see why they feed most of the game fish in New England at one point or another in their lives. Uh, just like herring, they feed mostly on plankton and travel in giant clouds near the shore. Therein lies the problem with the pogey. Any bait fish that you can't catch on rod and reel without snagging them cannot enter S tier in my book. Don't talk shit about my pogey. I will talk shit about them. Obama was lucky to get one near the shore with a cast net, but those of us with no boat aren't so lucky and will never sniff a pogey. Plus, they pose an environmental risk because a lot of them die when the water quality shifts or there's a lot of algae in the water, resulting in massive fish dying that'll make the surrounding area stink for days. You can't deny that a big old fat pogey is a fantastic bait. I won't deny it, but it is disappointing that they aren't better considering they're just like a giant shad. With that mouth, they should be easily caught with a sabiki rig, but it just doesn't happen unless the pogey is giant. What that mouth do? Uh, um, but they can also get pretty big, like you said. Joe makes good points here, but I can't say Don doesn't know what he's talking about for once. I feel like they miss S tier and fall into A above herring. That seems about right. Oh, uh, fine, but cut pogey heads are one of the best baits for huge striper. 
Speaking of great baits for huge striper, next up we have the Atlantic mackerel. Fuck yes. These are, in my opinion, the best bait fish you can get your hands on. That's debatable, but what I, I love about mackerel is that they're more than just bait. They, they can get pretty big. I think the record's like seven pounds. Not only are they very big for a bait fish, but this is also the first fish that I've considered the strength of the fight in the ranking. Being closely related to tuna and bonito, this fish is an extremely powerful swimmer, pound for pound stronger than any bait fish. It's a pretty wild ride to hook a whole mackerel on a bobber. Most people don't even use bobbers because these things take them right down. You're better off going to the store and buying a bunch of party balloons to tie on rather than using bobbers. Plus, mackerel are actually a really good eating. Drag netters target them often. The only annoying part of these guys is having to recast every few minutes because they'll just leave the spot that you cast it at in the first place. The other annoying part can be finding them. Mackerel have a really wide range of depths that they can appear at. Fishermen are always asking each other where the mackerel are around here. Yeah, finding mackerel can be wicked hard. It's the ocean, the same goes for any fish. You won't always know where to look. I think the fact that mackerel can be at depths of 3,000 feet or up at the surface eating whatever can fit in their mouths makes them highly adaptable, so that's more of a positive. When you do find them, it can be quite an enjoyable experience catching mackerel on a sneaky rig. If you think bait fish aren't fun to catch, then you haven't had five horse mackerel fighting you at once. Is there anything the mackerel can't do? Not really. They also provide some great entertainment when game fish go after them. They're insanely fast, so it sometimes takes striper and bluefish a couple minutes to pin them down. Overall, I think they are clearly S tier. Easy S, but do we think they're better than sand eels? I think so. Sand eels might be a better bait at times, but mackerel have way more going for them as a species. All right, cool mackerel are the best bait fish. Can we move on to game fish? Not just yet. There's only one bait fish left, and it's not even a fish. Oh, have sea worms made it on the list? Well, we didn't include earthworms in the last list, so I think we should reserve ranking things that you can catch with rod and reel, or at least a net. Oh, oh, is it a crab? Not quite. What is this marine biology trivia? Just tell us what it is. It's the squid. Yeah. OK, that's fair. Squid are pretty epic. Squid works especially well for bottom feeders like flounder, codfish, and sea bass. But how do you actually catch them? I've only seen them in restaurants and hentai. Pretty much the same way we're fishing right now, but with squid lures. You can find them within 20, 30 yards from the shore. Can you eat the squid around here? Yeah, you can eat long fin squid. Many say it's very good. Man, it seems like they're in the contention for the best bait fish. Sure, they can be eaten by both fish and man alike, but to catch these squid, you risk getting inked. Neither the mackerel or the sand eels will fuck up your favorite fishing shirt in an instant. Got a point there. That shit gets everywhere. Yeah, but it still gets points for looking like an alien and being great in every other category. Well, another thing that sucks is the squid don't hang around for very long at all. Most of them clear out by the time the stripers are in. That's true for the long fin, but the short fin squid is fished for year round. They're a little bigger and live out in deeper water. So basically there's no downsides other than the inking. That's a pretty big knock. You're overreacting. Dealing with mackerel isn't the cleanest operation either. You got like four or five fish bleeding and flopping all around. You get scales and blood all over you. Skill diff. No, I think Joe's got a point. Squid are definitely high tier. S tier. You're just biased because you jerk off to them. Yeah, so what? Fucking pig. Enough of this. I'm putting them at the bottom of S tier considering the inking. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, oh, that's my flounder rod. Well, fuck, man, grab it. All yours, Donnie. You don't have to tell me twice. Why would you give this smelly Republican your fish? His bobber is right over by mine. Well, I feel bad because he got skunked last time and he lost a huge bass. Uh, didn't you also get skunked? No, I caught three bass after you left. Nothing big, though. Looks like a flounder. I'll go grab him. There he is. Nice fish, Donnie. Thanks, bro, Obama. I couldn't have done it without your rod, tackle, and bait. You're going to keep it? Those things are delicious. I think I will. Maybe we split the fillets if you catch something edible. I guess we'll see. What type of flounder is this anyway? Some call that the summer flounder, but that's mostly known as a fluke. I think I'll name him 2020 after the election. That was clearly a fluke. God, okay. Let's dive into game fish, starting with Donnie's catch, the fluke. Well, speaking as a guy that just caught one, it was pretty good. All the flat fishes have a special place in my heart for looking funny and tasting great. They are quite a strange bunch, aren't they? There's three major species in this area, but fluke is the only one to be found all along the East Coast. Well, since there's three of these 
flat fucks buried in the mud down there. Why don't we just go over their differences and then choose their tears all at once? That would be rather efficient. Nobody likes puns, Joe. What's the deal with flounder, Barack? Well, we got the fluke, also known as the summer flounder. Then we have the, the winter flounder, also known as the black back flounder. And then we have the Atlantic halibut that dwarfs them all and is the largest flatfish in the world, reaching weights of up to 700 pounds. Donald fat joke incoming. Well, now you ruined it. It can't be funny now. Donnie is so fat that fishermen shoot him in the head before bringing him on board to avoid him flopping around everywhere. Cool story, bro. Why don't you tell it again? So our halibut instant S tier for being huge. They do have a lot of qualities that fishermen love, like being huge, fighting hard, and tasting great. But the problem is they have been historically overfished, leading to them being heavily protected and pretty rare. And who the fuck wants to wait 10 minutes for their bait to hit the bottom to find these fish at depths where submarines implode? Too soon, bro. Fluke can go pretty deep too, but they spend the majority of their time in the summer months on the sandy coast. The same going for winter flounder, despite what their name might suggest. So really, what's the difference between fluke and flounder? Very few things. Fluke get a little bigger, up to 20 pounds. Flounder only get up to six or seven pounds, although in this area they are commonly found at the same size. A couple things winter flounder have going for them is they seem more common around here and generally have the best reputation for meat quality among the flat fishes. It sounds to me like flounder and fluke are high tier and halibut are the actual flukes. I thought we weren't doing puns anymore. That wasn't a pun, you moron. It was a play on words, if anything. In any case, you are correct. Halibut should be ranked lower. It's just not a sustainable game fish at this point in time. Sounds like C tier to me. I thought they were all from the sea. Uh, okay, now you're just trying to piss me off. I'm with you, Don. C tier on halibut. I'm uh, thinking fluke and flounder should be in A tier with flounder just barely ahead. That's good. I know fluke will appear on other lists. So it's, a, it's cool to see flounder get the edge for this area. Both are fantastic for dinner. Good stuff. Next, we should cover another trio of fish, one of which is what this entire area of Massachusetts is named after. Ah, uh, yes. Where are we again? We're in Cape Cod, Joe. Sounds like we're doing codfish next. That's right, Donnie. There are a bunch of cod species up here, but the main three we should focus on are haddock, pollock, and of course, the classic cod. Everybody knows how good the taste of cod is, and haddock seems to have an even better reputation, but I've never tried pollock. Do you know if it's as good as the cousins? From what I gather, pollock is just like haddock or cod, but slightly more mild flavoring. Cool, so all the codfish taste amazing, but are they any good as game fish? Well, strictly talking about size, the Atlantic cod has been known to get over 100 pounds, although overfishing has decreased their maximum size in the area over the years. Still, 80-pound cod are not unheard of. Pollock reaches less than half the size, and haddock won't get much bigger than 10 pounds. Sure, but how's the fight? I've caught codfish before, and they honestly don't have a ton of fight to them. It's certainly nothing like a tuna. The fight is basically all about depth and the weight of the fish. That makes haddock seem pretty mid. Am I just basically catching them to eat them, and that's it? Yeah, pretty much. Same with pollock, although people also catch baby pollock when jigging for mackerel with sabiki rigs, so they do make it into the bait fish scene. Okay, so in my estimation, cod are a low S tier because of their size, taste, and value to the area. Pollock are low A tier because of their use as bait and potential to be pretty large, while haddock are a low B tier because they don't get that big. That's pretty Gucci. I honestly would have been fine with all three being a tier lower. But this is good, too. Best not to anger the Bostonian fishermen. They already don't like me around here. Which reminds me, did you guys check the lobster rolls for pubes or spit? Oh, shit. I didn't. Regardless of how many pubes I've ingested, that shit slapped. So I don't have to think about it anymore. Let's move on to a fish that is often caught right alongside codfish, the cusk. Well, I didn't even know these things existed, and they kind of look the same as codfish. So what's the deal with them? They're pretty much the same as codfish. They get about as big as pollock, up to 40 pounds, and are caught the exact same way cod can be caught, jigging at depths hundreds of feet. Are they tasty? They're regarded as tasting similarly amazing as the cods. Well, is the fight any better at least? Nope, pretty weak swimmers just like cod. All things considered, I think we put them just below pollock in A tier. They do look pretty cool, but the fact that I've never heard of them before now makes me think that they aren't as common as the cods, B tier over haddock. I'm with Joe here. They're mostly bycatch when fishing for cod and are more often found in lobster traps. Are we ranking lobsters? No, but up next is a funky looking fish that eats lobsters. 
the wolfish. Jesus, Mary, and my mother's left ass cheek, is that seriously a real thing? Yes, it is. This fish is often memed on for being gnarly looking, but it lives hundreds of feet deep in the rocky bottom of the ocean eating lobsters and clams and shit. Is it supposed to be beautiful? Smash. X fucking skews fucking me. I'm just kidding. Mostly. No more brewskis for you. So what's the deal? You have to use lobster as bait? They just don't eat fish, so you can use clams and crabs and such. They get pretty big and they apparently taste just like lobster. Oh, damn. They sound like the high tier fish. Kinda. But there's a couple of huge problems with them. The main one being they are completely endangered and protected, so you can't take any. Fishing for them specifically is also frowned upon. Wow, well that kind of ruins the whole fishing situation for them, huh? You're just jerking me around, Barack. Telling me there's a fish out there that tastes delicious, but I can't eat it. Asshole. I say that we put them in D tier because they would be fine if they weren't protected. Good for me. That's about right. Not to mention they can actually do a number on you if they get those jaws around you. It should hurt the ranking of a fish when it's a serious threat to handle. Does that mean sharks are all nerfed on this list? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's get all the shark species out of the way before moving on to the most goaded game fish. That sounds fine. I've never hooked into a shark on purpose. Only the real chads target sharks. What should we start with? I think it would be more fun to start from the top and work our way down in terms of size. Let's start with the infamous great white shark. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna need a bigger boat. We don't have a boat, idiot. Well, most shark attacks happen close to shore anyway. And that's because it's where the people are. Do you ever use that brain of yours? These have to be an S tier, right? You're literally catching jaws. That's why I thought this would be a good shark to start with. You see, great whites are also extremely protected. You need special permits to even target a great white. I'm confused why it's even on the list. You're not allowed to target them, which makes for a boring fishing trip. I mainly include them to set the precedent for them in every other list. You're a legend if you hook into a great white by accident, but targeting them is pretty much a no-go. I personally put them in C tier for the chance of catching a smaller one and getting a good fisherman's tail out of it. It's a great white. It should go in S tier. I'm with you, Barack. Just move on. Okay, next we have the cousin of the white shark, the shortfin mako shark. Can you even fish for these ones? Uh, well, they are endangered, so you can't take them for meat. Not that the meat's good at all, but uh, people do take them for shark fin soup. You are, however, allowed to target them with special permits. Sure, but is it worth all the effort to target these when you know it has to be catch and release? A hundred percent. Makos are certainly the fastest shark, but they are also one of the fastest fish in the entire ocean. Do you fish for them like any other shark? Yeah, essentially all shark fishing is the same. Get out in the middle of the ocean where they might be and start chumming the water to draw them in. You can also troll for these ones since they're so fast. Is the fight as legendary as it seems to be? Yeah, definitely. We're talking about hours and not minutes. Plus, they can breach out of the water even faster than their great white cousins. They sound so amazing to catch. What's the catch? We've already covered all the downsides. It's a legendary fish that's pretty rare due to overfishing and requires a big boat and the heaviest gear to land. Considering the size at up to 1,300 pounds, plus immense speed and stamina, minus the downside. Makos deserve to be in high B tier. All the way down in B for this legend. I figured you would hold something like this above fish you just catch to eat. The fact that you need a bunch of permits and giant boat to get out and chase them is a huge financial investment. You'll need a small loan of a million dollars to even think about talking about the Mako. I wish we had a boat right now. We could actually go find the fish. Speaking of boats, is that boat coming right towards us? Is that Bill? Fucking losers! That fucking asshole Clinton seriously just blew by to scare our fish away and he won't even let us on the boat. Whatever, just ignore him. Where do we land on the Mako? I was at B tier. Come on, bro. At least A tier. I'm with Donnie this time. Definitely not for the vast majority of fishermen. You could be lucky enough to get a charter, though. Next shark. Okay, how about the thresher shark? How did you know that one was next on our list? I don't know the order of the list, but I've heard people rave about thresher sharks before. They are indeed a special animal. They may not get quite as big as Makos, they can still get in the half ton range. That tail is pretty wicked. It's the most interesting part about them. They use it to whip bait fish to stun them. Is there anything stupid keeping us from catching them or keeping them? 
They're not protected like the other two we've covered. And you can actually eat the meat. I've heard it's pretty good, nothing special. Okay, well, compared to the Mako, should it be in A tier? They are pretty rare, but worth targeting for sure. The only other knock is they will whip you in the fucking face and it'll hurt bad. Me personally, I'd rank them just above the Mako and B, but I'm fine either way. I'm cool with a low A tier. Next is the blue shark. The blues have a cool look to them. I like the deep blue color on a shark. They pretty much provide the sport fishing of the Mako without getting quite as big and not having as many protections. Although you have to check your state's regulations. Meat any good? Not really. It's another target of shark fin soup, but I'm not big on it. Yeah, I've heard grizzled old guys that look like the insane captain from Jaws talk about blue sharks like it's the best sport fishing shark in the world. They could be. The reason people say that is probably because these sharks travel in small schools near the surface. They are often called the wolves of the sea for this very reason. Topwater fishing for sharks sounds elite. Yeah, and you can even fly fish for them. Ooh, now you got me hot and bothered. Don't be gross. Where should we rank them? It should go just slightly above the Mako in B tier, where the Thresher should have gone. Okay, this time that's fine. Just a few more sharks. Next one being the poor beagle shark, sometimes called the mackerel shark. Never heard of this thing. Is it named after a homeless dog or something? Possibly. Nobody really knows. It looks kind of like a great white. They're in the same family, just like the mako shark. The poor beagle is basically a cold water great white shark. Any major differences between this one and its cousins? Not much in size, although the poor beagle is a bit smaller than its cousins, only reaching about 500 pounds maximum. But the, the sport is just as good as the mako and blue sharks. They are pretty endangered, so you can't keep them for shark fin soup. But nonetheless, a fantastic high-end sport fish. I imagine the folks here in New England take pride in having their very own large shark species. I don't know, man. I feel like I would have heard something about the shark by now. <laughs> These people never shut up about their lobster or their red socks or their green monsters. I just want to tell them, every can of monster is green. You're not fucking special. That's not quite what they're talking about, but I agree. Watch yourself, Obama. Whenever a black person is on a separate team from them, the everyday statistically intelligent Yankee summons a horde of poor white trash dudes from the slums of Southie to rain down racial slurs on you like a nor'easter. Everywhere has those kinds of people. Now, where do we put the poor beagle? Well, since we put better options like the blue and make a shark and high B tier, this guy probably fits right behind them. I disagree. Based on the location and the fact that mackerel are the best bait for these badass mini great whites, makes them at least over the mako for this area. I concur with my colleague. I'm not positive you still know what we're talking about, but I'm not going to fight it since I would put him just behind the mako myself. Okay, well that leaves us with two sharks. First, being the common dogfish. They have a ton of different names, but most know this particular species as the spiny dogfish. Boring, Skip. Second shark dog want to be in a row. Uh, Donnie, if you disrespect my sea puppies one more time, I will have my secret service guys throw you in the sea. Why the hell are you so quick to defend a nuisance bycatch fish that can barely call itself a shark? I'm on Joe's side of things this time. The dogfish is severely underrated in every category that applies. What? Barack, I understand when Joe takes your side, but how can a man with a fully functioning brain such as yourself agree with this fucking geriatric patient? What's wrong with the dogfish? What the dogfish doing? This is a trash fish. At least I know it's time to pick up and move when all you can catch is these things. Out of all your obnoxious takes, this one sucks the most. It's pretty clear to me that you've never specifically targeted dogfish like all the other fishermen that hate them. Trust me when I tell you this is a great game fish. Not only are they not picky in terms of bait, but they travel in schools of hundreds all around the same size. <laughs> Once you get into some good sized ones, you're in for a fantastic day of fishing. This is also far and away the best tasting shark on the list. I've had some over in Europe where they called it rock salmon, and it was the best fish and chips I've ever ate. Those Europeans are always cooking weird shit and calling it something normal to confuse people. He's not fucking around, Donnie. Dogfish is delicious. Their meat is sweetened due to the amount of shellfish they eat. Plus, look how cute they are. That means nothing to me. I'm surprised you're so quick to eat them if you think they're cute little sea puppies. I can still eat things that are cute. Just ask your wife. Oof! Fucking scallywag. So where should we rank the dogfish, Barack, since Don is uncultured? Well, if you're using the right tackle, they can give you a great fight. Adding that with the schooling behavior and downright delicious meat, and considering that the numbers of dogfish have fluctuated to dangerous levels at times due to overfishing, 
I'd say the dogfish deserves the highest ranking of any shark on the list. I'd be at A tier over the thresher. The weed must be getting way too strong up here. The weed is strong, but so is our logic. Not really. The dogfish doesn't get that big. 20 pounds is a dream for them. Plus, you forgot to mention that these things are, are venomous. Wait, really? They do secrete a very mildly toxic venom from the spines above their dorsal fins. I would still consider the dogfish as the most easily handleable shark by a huge margin. They really don't have the strength to turn around and bite you, and it's pretty easy to avoid the spines. I'm totally with you in A-tier Barack. Oh my God, this is bullshit. Goddamn liberal fishermen. This is the last time we do a list without George. All right, what's the last shark? The last one I have is technically not a shark, but is in the same family. The stingray look alike, the skate. Let me guess, uh, S-tier because their little wings are cute or something? Meh. You don't really eat these things and they don't get bigger or useful bait, so they're pretty trash. Talking about the little skate, you would be correct. There are a few more skate species that sometimes show up in these waters, but the little skate is the most common. Fishermen are always catching these things as by catch of flounder. Are you gonna sit there and tell me that they're somehow a good game fish? No, I'm not doing that with this one. They only get a pound or two and there is virtually no reason to catch them unless you wanna bait up a lobster trap. Gentlemen, I think we found our F-tier fish. You know, I, I don't think I'd be opposed to that. Yeah, there's really no redeeming qualities to speak of. On to the best game fish of the Northeast. Let's begin with the classic scup, sometimes called the porgy, not to be confused with the pogey. I love these little guys, a great fish to start with if you're just getting into saltwater fishing. They are pretty fun to catch at first, but since they don't get much bigger than a few pounds, one would get bored of them pretty quickly. I don't know, Don. A lot of people fish for these fish every year. These are basically the bluegill of the sea. They fight pretty hard, they don't get very big, but are very plentiful in areas where they're found. They taste pretty good too, but they, they do have a ton of bones that get in the way. Still a very accessible saltwater fish. You can easily catch these inshore and at piers or docks. Tackle is super basic too. Since we put bluegill and B-tier in the freshwater list, I feel like scup fit right in there as well. Where in B-tier are we thinking? I think I'd go right under the sharks for them. Good to go, Barack. Fine with me too. Okay, let's move on to a lesser known fish in this region, the Acadian redfish. You're gonna have to explain to me what the fuck that is because I've never seen it before in my life. It's clearly your spirit animal. It's the same color and everything. They do appear in this stunning reddish orange, which is pretty exclusive to the redfish and Donald. As far as what kind of fish this is, it's a member of the rockfish family. Most rockfish are down south, but this is the only one that appears in the deep frigid waters of the north. They don't really live around here in Cape Cod, so you'll have to go even farther north like Maine to really get into them. Are they any good to catch? What's the size and approach? They don't really get that big. A couple of pounds is a big one. Uh, they live down in hundreds of feet on rocky bottoms, so you can use things like cod jigs to get them in. The fight is fine for a fish of this size. And how about the meat? I often see rockfish on seafood menus. Their meat is like any other rockfish and competes for the best tasting fish in the area. It seems pretty inconvenient needing a big boat to go deep enough to find fish that are the size of scup. Well, a lot of things make up for it, like the fact that they school in the hundreds and are quite easy to catch. You can fill a cooler up in no time. Additionally, you can fish for these in the dead of winter when all other seasonal game fish are long gone. Whoa, those are some good qualities for this list. Still seems pretty inconvenient to target them. That's kind of true, but you can always get a charter on a big party boat and catch a ton of them. They sound high tier to me. I will admit that they have some pretty interesting stuff going for them, but I, I'm not quite in the high tiers. Maybe in B tier over the sharks. I can see where you're both coming from, and I think I'm gonna split the difference and put them at the very bottom of A tier. Good spot for them. All right, now for one of my favorites, both to catch and eat, the black sea bass. Oh, fuck yes, finally we're getting into some top dogs. The black sea bass is definitely the most delicious fish on the list and is the most brilliantly colored of any fish around. You got that right. Plus they are a lot more common than the Donny fish we just covered. They are certainly a lot easier to get to than the red fish because they don't go nearly as deep. Plus they get bigger, up to eight or nine pounds. The approach can be just like fishing for freshwater bass. Look for underwater structure in shallower waters and rocky bottom. Great lures include jigs and sinking rigs. Live bait is always a good idea with these ones as well. 
Sounds like you've caught a few before, Donnie. Yeah, I've even caught a few four-pounders. They're pretty common from Maine all the way down to Texas. With them being that tasty, along with its many other pros, Black Sea bass deserve an S tier, for sure. I will second that and add that they should go straight to the top of the list as it stands now. Okay, very good. Up next, we have what some call the blackfish, more commonly known as the tautog. What a weird name. I've heard some people call it the tautog or the tautog, but I prefer blackfish because you don't sound like an asshole trying to say that. But if you didn't vote for me, are you really a blackfish? These guys are similarly as awesome as the black sea bass, except they can get twice the size. They may get up to 20 pounds, but the meat isn't as good. Uh-oh, that's a big no-no in my book. They might not be as good to eat, but they're a really hard fighter with a gnarly set of human-looking teeth. They are also pretty easy to find like other sea bass. Although this is actually a species of wrasse and not a grouper or a bass. Bars. I, for one, would like to put the blackfish in low S tier. They're easy to find and provide a great game fish, with the only two minor downsides being that you have to specifically use shellfish and crabs for bait, and there are better fish to eat in general. You make a pretty strong argument. What do you think, Joe? I was thinking high A tier for them, but I'm willing to let them just barely slip into S tier under the cod. I was right around there, too. Sweet. Moving on to the squeeteague. Have you developed a speech impediment just now? No, I'm talking about what's commonly called the weak fish. It's a type of drum that appears more like a sea trout. Yeah, Donnie, even I knew about this one. The squeeteague is the state fish of Delaware. It's funny how you can remember that, but you don't know where the fuck you are. Uh, are we in Bass Bay? Cape Cod, Joe. Pretty close, I guess. Like the chips? Yes, Joe, like the chips. Now, can we get back to the weak fish? Why is it called the weak fish anyway? Does it suck at fighting? No, not really. Um, it's, it's pretty strong, in fact. They call it the weak fish because structurally, their mouths are very weak and can easily shake the hook. They're found pretty close to shore in the season and can often be schooled alongside stripers and bluefish in areas just like where our bobbers are right now. If that's the case, then I'm surprised I haven't caught one. I've done a lot of fishing near New York in the shallows and never once hooked into one of these. They can be pretty rare depending on the location, but they do have a wide range of basically the entire East Coast. Uh, okay, I'm starting to get the picture, but how big are they? About 20 pounds maximum. Okay, they seem pretty mid. Bro, chill. I wouldn't say mid, but I also wouldn't say high tier. They're a little hard to find and even harder to keep on the hook, but still make for great game fishing nonetheless. I always figured them as a game fish. That's on hard mode, thus landing a big one is, is a prestigious act for a fisherman. But do they taste good? They don't taste bad, but there's better options. C tier, mid. Fuck you, at least A tier. Okay, so since I'm the tiebreaker, and I agree with both of your points to a certain extent, I believe the weak fish should be in B tier, specifically over the sharks. Thank you, Barack. I can die in peace now. All you really wanted in life was this fish to be ranked way too high in our list? Bummer. Holy fuck. My bobber, it's gone. Well, what does that mean, Joe? I'll probably need to buy a new one. No, Joe, grab the rod, there's a fish. Oh yeah, let me get it. I'm sure that's what he says to all the girls that visit the White House on the high school field trips. I got him, guys. Look, it's a blue fish. Bring it in, Joe. Almost. All right, I'm gonna grab him. Nice fish, Joe. Thanks, man. Looks like a keeper. I've got some fillets to trade you, Donnie. If you think I'm dumb enough to trade fluke fillets for a fucking stinky bluefish, then we all might have overestimated your cognitive ability. Sounds like we're ranking the bluefish next. How was that fight, Joe? Man, these things pull like Trump at a McDonald's. You get a couple of nice jumps out of them, too. Bluefish are one of the toughest fighters at their size, with blazing speeds and an affinity for leaping out of the water. There's also no more common fish to target around here than the bluefish from June to October. They can reach up to 40 pounds, but are more common at a quarter that size. Definitely one of the best inshore game fish. The only problem is bluefish are a greasy, smelly fish that is a game fish first and a meal last. I will admit they're not my first choice for dinner, but you can still eat them. You can also eat your fucking leather wallet, but you don't see me trying to. Bluefish also contains a lot of mercury, much like some of the sharks on the list. It wouldn't be smart to eat them consistently. So where does that put them on the tier list? They are an overwhelmingly popular game fish, great fighters, and you can even use small bluefish as bait for tuna. They're definitely a high tier fish, even through the lack of meat quality. I'd say they can't make it into S tier for that, but I can see no better fish in A tier. That's a good spot, Joe. You have my blessing. 
Thank you, Father. Good stuff. All right, it's finally time to cover the striper. The return of the king. We did already cover the, the striper in the last list, but that was fresh water. These fish are even better in salt water. By far, the most targeted game fish from here to the Florida Keys. They can get a whole lot bigger in salt water, too, even up to 80 pounds. Even a 50-pound bass is a fisherman's wet dream. Fishermen pretty much only have wet dreams. Regardless, the striper is the quintessential saltwater fish and deserves to be at the very top of the list. You can't go wrong. They are super common, even close to shore, while providing a great eating and an even better fight. Easily the top of the list right now. Not so fast, Joe. It's not over yet. Up next, we have the little toonie, oftentimes called the false albacore. Uh, oh, yeah, I know these guys. They're like a miniature tuna. Exactly. Only getting up to about 20 pounds, the false albacore is a minnow compared to its cousins, but fights just like them. Tuna and their whole family are by far the strongest fish on the entire planet. They have a motor that just won't quit, like me during election season. That's an understatement. Tuna have completely hydrodynamic bodies, allowing them to effortlessly glide through the water at immense speed. I'm not really used to seeing tuna this small. We have fish of all sizes on this list. Just scale down your gear and you'll have the same experience. Very true. Some say there is no better fly fishing target than these little guys. You know, they're really not all that little. The record's actually 36 pounds and 48 inches long. That's actually pretty impressive. I didn't know they got that big. They sound amazing. Is the meat as good as bluefin? Not even fucking close. You're better off eating canned tuna from the store. Jesus, that's kind of a big knock. It does hurt their ranking, but since they are easier to get a hold of than most of their cousins, I think the little toony deserves an S tier. I agree. They have so much going for them. Maybe not the top of S tier, but definitely over the cod and blackfish. Anything you can't eat shouldn't go in S tier. You've been overruled. Sorry, Joe. I can't ignore the power of this fish on the proper gear. How can we put it in S tier when it's not even honest about its identity? We're moving on. Next is another tiny tuna, the Atlantic Bonito. What's the deal with them compared to the false albacore? They are actually a very small tuna, never getting much over 10 pounds. They share most of the same pros and cons as the little tuna. In fact, they are often confused. The major difference is size, but Bonito can often travel in much larger schools. Is the meat still bad? Yeah, you're not going to be taking any home. In that case, I will not allow them an S tier. Yeah, that's fine, but they still offer some of the best fishing due to the fight and the numbers. How about we put them in A tier, right below the blue fish? Okay, good. I'd probably put them even lower, but seeing them below dogfish would make me scream. We're down to our last few fish, guys. Let's start out with the most prestigious, the mighty bluefin tuna. We made it. This is the most goaded fish in the history of fishing. These are the top dogs in every single category. Not only do they grow up to 1,400 pounds, they fight harder than any other fish and are considered one of the most prized fish to eat in the entire world. I love me some bluefin sushi. Bluefins are truly the peak of the hobby. They, of course, share the same prerequisite drawbacks of sharks. You'll need the heaviest gear and a large boat to chase these giants, but it's definitely all worth it when you land a big tuna. I've only caught one bluefin. It was only about 80 pounds, but it still gave me the fight of my life. These things can go for hours, just like yours truly. That's cap. You fall asleep after doing anything for more than 20 minutes. Fishermen have been known to tap out against the bluefin tuna. Their strength and endurance is unmatched. I love the look of them too, not just the color, which is incredible, but just seeing something that huge glide under the water without disturbing it at all is the most majestic thing I've ever seen. On the other hand, they often create such a boil on the surface chasing bait fish that they can confuse whale watching boats for a breaching humpback. These things are wild. And you can also sell them for a pretty penny. I heard one sold in Japan for $3 million. That's three small loans. Uh, have you guys ever seen that show, Wicked Tuna? Oh, yeah, big time. I watched the fuck out of that show. Tuna.com is a legend. That's been a good one for a while. All these boats competing for the best earnings every season is a fantastic formula for a show. The upsides of fishing for the bluefin far outweigh the downsides. Sure, you might not always get one, but they wouldn't be so special if they were easy to catch. They are a mandatory S tier. Fuck that. They solo every fish on the list in the entire hobby of fishing. Whoa, you're seriously gonna put them over the striper that easy? I am, and I don't feel like I need to explain myself. That's tough, but I'm with you. Yeah, that's fine with me. Next, we have another tuna, this time the big eye tuna. Okay, how does it match up to the goat bluefin? They're very similar. 
The big eye is somewhere between a third and a half the size of its bluefin cousins. They love deeper water. But other than that, it's pretty much a mini bluefin. If you can consider something that gets 400 pounds to be miniature. Here, are they still just as tasty? Yes, they are. In fact, they sell for more than bluefin tuna on average. Well, that's all I need to hear. Where should they go in S tier? Bars. Well, this time I'm not comfortable putting them over the striper, but I would definitely put them right under. I can concede to that. Me too, plus they look even better than the bluefin, which is impressive. All right, Barack, what is our last fish? The last one we'll cover today will be the Atlantic swordfish. What a fish to end off the list. These things are just as legendary as the big tuna. I know you also catch these fish alongside the legendary tunas. They are just as strong and get just as big too. Swordfish can get up to 1,200 pounds and the fight can be just as good as a bluefin. You can argue that they are more common as well. I've had the swordfish before too. It's another really good one, although not as good as some in S tier right now, especially the tunas. That's still a lot of meat if you can land a big sword. Swords was another good show. It was like deadliest catch, but with giant fish. They occasionally caught some of the sharks and tuna on this list as well. I wish that show kept going. It was pretty good. I'm down to make a tier list of that or wicked tuna sometime. True that. Now, where should we rank the sword? Definitely S tier. I'd say right over the big eye and under the striper. The ease of access from the striper is only outmatched by the prowess of the bluefin. I'll have to agree. Nice work putting together this list, Barack. I appreciate it, man. Well, that's going to be it for this list. I... Not just yet. Looks like you got one. Hell yeah! Fish on, boys! Let's go, Barack. On the downrigger, it could be a big one. Oh, he's giving me a fight. Bring him in, Brobama. I see color. I'm going to get him. I see him too. It's a striper. There he is, gentlemen. Nice fish, Barry. Looks like a keeper. Thanks, guys, and thank you to everyone that made it this far. Be sure to comment where we should go next and any other ideas you have for content. Feel free to like and subscribe. These lobster rolls aren't free, you know. Bye, guys.